Well, good morning. Happy New Year. <laughs> Welcome to Union Congregational Church, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here, whether in these pews or online, whether today or throughout the week. We are so glad uh, that you're here today. Um, I have a few announcements. Uh, we're so thankful to have uh, Sue Stelsel back um, back on the piano and uh, the organ uh, for for a little while, and um, we're just we're 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 so grateful uh, for your gifts, Sue. Your your music is beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Um, and then um, if you ordered a poinsettia. Um, it's time to bring them back home. Um, so, um, so uh, pick them up after um, after service today, if uh, if that's you. Uh, and thanks for to everybody who helped make our Christmas observances so beautiful. We we had lovely um, Christmas Eve services and a Christmas Day service, and um, and and the Blue Christmas service was really great too. So. Um, I'm really, really grateful for all of those who helped with that. Um, it is come, the time is co quickly coming for the annual meeting, which is, I believe, on the 29th um, after worship, um, right in this room, which means that uh, the annual report, um, um, Alana has to put that together throughout the month. And it really does take a month uh, to put that stuff together. Um, so um, we're asking all committee um, committee people to have all of those materials to Alana no later than January seventh. Uh, so so um, this coming Saturday. Um, and for those of you who um, haven't heard details on this, um, I um, I think I, I I think I said last week, or if I didn't, um, you got an email, um, Donna Call passed away last week, and so her celebration of life will be on Saturday the 7th um, at Werner Harmson. Um, I believe the, um, the service is at noon um, visitation. I don't remember what time visitation is, um, but then there's a light lunch uh, to follow. Uh, are there any other announcements that anybody has? Yes. Good morning and happy new year. I have several announcements coming from Diaconate this morning. Um, we are updating our church membership list. Uh, we were missing some birthdays and uh, some of us have switched from landlines to cell phone numbers. And we just want to update and make sure we have the most current. That is located on the butcher block in the back. So even if you're already a member, um, and if everything is status quo, if you could just put your name down and say status quo, or put your name down and then just let us know of any changes, that would be wonderful. Um, we also are looking for people that are interested in being on the Congregational Care Committee. It's a committee that would help uh, or assist Pastor Jacob in visiting our shut-ins. Um, Pastor Jacob has offered to, you know, give us some guidance on that. Sometimes people just need a, a friendly face to sit down with, and other times um, we would serve them communion. And, you know, if you can only help once in a while or just once a month, um, just put your name down and we'll be in touch and we'll kind of form a schedule uh, of those interested and Pastor Jacob will lead us on what to do and what to say and and uh, many of these people you already know so it would be fun to go visit these people and and greet them so we want them we want to be able to reach out to our shut-ins and I just want to mention some of our shut-ins don't have access to zoom don't have the computer services so they love hearing from our their church members their church family all right, and then the third and last one is something to put on your calendar for the future. Uh, January 14th um, at the 9 around 9.30, it's Saturday at 9.30, we're going to start taking down these beautiful decorations from Christmas. If you can help out, we'd appreciate it. Thank you.
Thank you, Becky. Are there any other announcements this morning? In that case, let us, uh, let us join together in the call to worship. As we gather on this first day of the new year, we give thanks for our community of faith, which has seen us through many joys and challenges in the past year for the love of God in Jesus Christ. We gather this day to be hopeful. We gather this day in a spirit of trust. Let us worship together in that spirit. Please join me in the unison opening prayer. God of new beginnings, your love has sustained us for generations. Through joys and challenges, you have been steadfast, sharing in our sorrows and celebrations. As we enter into this new year, move us to generosity. Help us respond to the needs of our congregation and our community. Help us denounce injustice in our world. Help us work for your peace so that we may live according to your desires. Amen. Now please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so and join us in our opening hymn. This is number 355. This is a day of new beginnings. Let's see. I don't see. Um, I don't see a whole. I don't see any kids here in person. So, um, but there might be somebody online. But we are all children of God. Amen. <laughs> so as we um, as we approach this new year, um, I'd like to I'd like to ask you what is what is your greatest hope for the new year. Any ideas? Anyone have anything to share? Ukraine war is over, yes. Anyone else? There are lots of, uh, there are lots of things to hope for in the, in the new year. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to get ordained and I'm really excited 
uh, for all the ways that I will be uh, serving this church and we'll be doing great things together. Uh, and uh, I, I invite us all to think about uh, different ways that, uh, that we can be hopeful in, in this new year. So uh, we, well, let's pray together. I will say a short phrase and I invite you all to repeat it back to me. Dear God, thank you for a new year, for new opportunities to grow, to love, and to care for one another. Help us share your love everywhere we go. Amen. So our scripture readings today, um, one comes from the book of Ecclesiastes. There's a season for everything and a time for every matter under the heavens, a time for giving birth and a time for dying, a time for planting and a time for uprooting what was planted, a time for killing and a time for healing a time for tearing down and a time for building up, a time for crying and a time for laughing, a time for mourning and a time for dancing, a time for throwing stones and a time for gathering stones, a time for embracing and a time for avoiding embraces, a time for searching and a time for losing, a time for keeping and a time for throwing away, a time for tearing and a time for repairing. A time for keeping silent and a time for speaking. A time for loving and a time for hating. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from all their hard work? I have observed that the task that God has given human beings God has made everything fitting in its time, but has also placed eternity in their hearts without enabling them to discover what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there's nothing better for them but to enjoy themselves and do what's good while they live. Moreover, this is the gift of God, that all people should eat, drink, and enjoy the results of their hard work. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Now, when the human one comes in his majesty, we're talking about Jesus, and all of his angels are with him, he will sit on his majestic throne. All the nations will be gathered in front of him. He will separate them from each other, just as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put his sheep on his right side, but the goats he will put on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, who, receive, who will receive good things from my creator? Inherit, inherit the kingdom that was prepared for you before, before the world began. I was hungry, and you gave me food to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothes to wear. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then those who are righteous will reply to him, Lord, when did we see that you were hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you as a stranger and welcome you or naked? and give you clothes to wear? When did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? Then the king will reply to them, I assure you that when you have done it for one of the least of these brothers and sisters and siblings of mine, then you have done it for me. Then he will say to those on his left, get away from me, you who will receive terrible things 
Go into the unending fire that has been prepared for the devil and his angels. I was thirsty and you didn't give me food to eat. I was, I, I was hungry and you didn't give me food to eat. I was thirsty and you didn't give me anything to drink. I was a stranger and you didn't welcome me. I was naked and you didn't give me clothes to wear. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick in prison and didn't do anything to help you? Then he will answer, I assure you that when you haven't done it for one of the least of these, you haven't done it for me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous ones will go into eternal life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Speaking of being thirsty, I'm going to stay down here, but my water was up there. My friends, will you join me in prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts in this hour be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So last summer, my family miraculously all got together for a family vacation. We spent a week at a beach house on Carolina Beach near Wilmington, North Carolina. When we weren't enjoying the beach, we were eating half our weight in excellent seafood or indulging in what we like to call our dip of the day, which entails trying a different chip and dip combination every single day. We ate way too much on that trip. Around that same time, lots was happening in our lives. Emily, my sister, uh, had just finished her first semester of grad school, and I was interviewing for pastor positions and conducting a nationwide search. So we were all keenly aware that this might be one of the last times we had a family vacation together with just the four of us. We knew that our future work schedules might place different demands on our time. We hope to welcome partners and children into the family one day, which will, of course, change the dynamic of our family time. We also knew that we wanted to stay connected with our roots. My mom is from North Carolina, and we happened to be there on the one-year anniversary of my grandma's death. So we hope and anticipate that there will be more family vacations in the future, but we were basking in the sweetness of that present moment. Even if that present moment involved getting up really early for the sunrise, which isn't a normal activity for this night owl. As I look back on that trip, I think about the various seasons of life we were all in. Some seasons were ending and some seasons were beginning. I can imagine that many of you have reflected in similar ways about the seasons of life you have encountered. Also, on this New Year's Day, it's natural to take stock, to set go our goals and our priorities, to look for ways we can better ourselves in the year ahead. However we decide to orient ourselves as the calendar turns, it seems to me that we can find helpful accompaniment in our text from Ecclesiastes. For starters, commentator William P. Brown reminds us that positive and negative situations are paired in Ecclesiastes in no particular order to demonstrate the totality of the human experience. It's a reality, for example, 
that someone we know will give birth this year. And it's also a reality that someone we know will die this year. These are facts of life, whether we like them or not. But life and death extend beyond the literal sense. There are also priorities in our lives that we will choose to build and grow and flourish. Or other priorities we'll choose to let fall by the wayside because they don't carry the importance they used to carry. Relationships end. Circumstances change. Priorities shift. Sometimes that change can be good and healthy and needed. And sometimes that change can break our hearts. But nonetheless, it's change. It's inevitable. There are also those differences in situations that affect how we live our lives. Sometimes we stay silent when it's not our battle to fight. And sometimes we have to advocate for the justice we want to see in the world in the face of injustice. Sometimes what is broken can be mended, and sometimes not. Other times it's best for our health if we don't. The Ecclesiastes text ends by alluding to a task God gives human beings. This passage doesn't go into great detail on what this task is, but if you read further into Ecclesiastes 2, the chapter before, or more into chapter 3, you'll find a common theme of reflection on work and vocation, which is a worthy study on its own merits, but not quite fitting with the rest of today's message. Uh, so um, if you'd like to dive more into that, I invite you to do so on your own. So what about Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, this baby that we just welcomed into the world just a week ago? What is his task for us? According to the text which has been kept for us in Matthew 25, Jesus talks about all the ways those who are righteous will follow his will. In other words, he offers a blueprint for some of the most important behavior of living in community. He talks about what some would call the day of judgment, where both the righteous and the unrighteous will answer to Jesus upon their death. To the righteous, Jesus will say, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes to wear and I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. And, we did, and the righteous will have done just that because they know that that is what Jesus asks of them. It turns out it's not just about doing those things for Jesus specifically, but instead seeing the face of Christ in one another and caring for each other as Christ cared for us. It might not seem at the outset that these two scriptures connect very well, but the second text actually leads us to the main point I want to make today. As we approach this new year, God gives us a task for every season of our lives to work for justice, peace, and well-being for all. So as I begin to draw this message to a close, I'd like to ask you this question. What time is it? Now, I have a watch on, so I'm not asking what the actual time is. But what I am asking is, what time is it for our congregation? And what time is it for you in your life? We have our annual congregational meeting after worship in just a few weeks, and we're about to reflect on the year, make decisions together, and present present our goals for the future. 
As the year goes on, we'll consider, will we consider a new initiative? Will we do more community outreach? Will we reevaluate our mission and our programming and make necessary changes to improve its effectiveness? Surely, new opportunities await us to build, to grow, to reach, to give birth to something exciting in the life of our congregation if we allow ourselves to do that necessary work. God will guide us in the ways that we should go, and God might reveal something that you or I never would have dreamed possible. And what about you? What seasons of life will you navigate in the coming year? Will it be like the story I shared of my own family where some seasons were ending and others were beginning? Do you enter this coming year with excitement, with wonder, or even with apprehension? My door is always open to you if you'd like to talk more about that. As you consider these things, also be mindful of Christ's call to you and to us all. The season is always right to do justice, to work for peace, and to care for our neighbors in need. Christ's advocacy for the least of these is a vital part of the mission we're called to co-labor in together. So I ask again, what time is it? What time is it for you? What time is it for the church? And what time is it for our community? As you prepare to answer that question as this new year dawns, may you remember Christ's companionship, Christ's care, and Christ's call to action. Happy New Year, friends. Let's work with Christ to make it a season of hope. Amen. Now, next, we will sing um, a hymn called The Summons. It's one of my favorite hymns, and I don't know if it's a, it's a totally familiar tune to all of you, um, so um, maybe, um, maybe we can keep my microphone on in case, um, in case, we, need, um, in case we need that, but um, please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so and join me in singing the summons. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be Please be seated.
So we now come into a time of more intentional prayer. I invite you to take a deep breath with me as we think of those situations and people for whom we might need prayers. And as usual, um, I will um, offer an intercession. I will say, God in your mercy, and I invite you to respond if you'd like, receive our prayer. God in your mercy, receive our prayer. Um, I ask for continued prayers for Roy Williams. Uh, he was supposed to have um, a heart catheter surgery, uh, which has been uh, postponed due to some other health conditions that he's facing. Um, his surgery has been uh, rescheduled, and um, they hope to get to the bottom of the other um, the other things uh, soon. So uh, for Roy and for Shirley, God in your mercy, receive our prayer. Um, continued prayers for the families of Donna Call, uh, Janice Streekstra, and Marion Malnori, all of whom uh, recently passed away within the last month. Uh, for all of those who grieve their loss and remember their lives, God in your mercy, receive our prayer. What other prayers do we have this morning? Anybody? Oh, yes. Sorry. An extended family member just had a stroke or two weeks ago and is in or at the Christian home right now mm. um, going through some therapy. And and their name? Rojean. Rojean. For Rojean, God in your mercy. Receive our prayer. Anybody else today? Then let us take a time uh, together in a time of silent prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for your presence with us as this new year dawns and always. We give you thanks that you receive our prayers and that you are with us always. We ask uh, specifically for uh, your presence to be among those who we've mentioned uh, with our voices and in our hearts. We, um, we ask that you are present with those who are in need of your care the most, um, those who are facing food insecurity, um, experiencing homelessness or poverty, uh, experiencing discrimination of unjust, uh, unjust systems. We ask that you might empower us to be um, ge as generous in our care for others as Jesus calls us to be, to care for the least of these as we would care for Christ, who showed us the way from the very beginning and taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We now take the time to offer our gifts back to God. Uh, at Union Congregational Church, we give thanks for all sorts of gifts in all sorts of ways, uh, from time, talent, treasure, and prayer. Um, please be, um, please give generously as uh, as your heart and spirit allow you to give.
surprise that this coming from Brady Lee. So and join us in our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host, Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God with us, you have given us work to do, to find those in need of your love and care and show them compassion and kindness. Help us use these gifts to do just that. Help our lives be a response to the love we found in you. Amen. Please be seated. We now enter into a celebration of Holy Communion, um, a reminder uh, for, uh, for all um, that uh, this church celebrates an open communion table, which recognizes that Christ is the host and all are welcome and invited uh, to participate. Uh, if, you, um, if you haven't already gotten one um, on, on your way in, um, th uh, there, there's, uh, there were uh, communion wafers and cups. Um, if you so if you haven't gotten one, uh, you can go to the back and, and get one. Uh, and uh, if you're joining us on Zoom, um, there's a little bit of liturgy before, um, before we uh, share the elements together. Um, so, uh, so I invite you to uh, find whatever elements uh, you have in your pantry and, and, and join us uh, for communion. Friends, we gather in the spirit of our God with us, Emmanuel. He cared for the last, the lost, and the least. People the rest of society ignored. His words were some, sometimes strong, sometimes terse, and sometimes uncomfortable, especially to those in positions of power and high authority. But today, he reminds us to give food to the hungry, clothing to the needy, and hope to the hopeless. In order to live according to his command, we remember his presence in our lives through this table. This is the joyful feast of all those who have known Jesus for a long time and all those who want to know God more. All people are worthy, welcome, and wanted at this table because it is Christ's table. Let us pray. Emmanuel, God with us you understood that there was a time for you to live and a time for you to die. There was a time for you to tear down oppression and a time to build the beloved community of Christians throughout the world. We have learned from the faithfulness of your followers in every generation. We celebrate this holy meal, remembering you as we share bread and cup together. On the night of betrayal and desertion, after he had shared a meal with his friends, Jesus took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body given for you. Every time you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. After they were finished eating, he took a cup. He blessed it and gave thanks to God, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Every time you drink this, remember me.
Come, Holy Spirit, come. Make this bread and cup a reminder that Jesus is with us and guides us on the way. My friends, this is the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Take and eat. Take and drink. Let us pray. God of grace, thank you for once again meeting us at this table and reminding us of Christ's gift of love. Help us live as a response to that gift in our words and actions. Amen. Now please join us in our closing hymn, number 457, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian. My friends, receive these words of benediction. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us that there is a time for everything under heaven. As usual, Jesus turns this into a command. It's time to do justice now. It's time to care for the world now. It's time to be generous and merciful now. In the spirit of the newborn baby who turns the world upside down with revolutionary love. Let's get to work. And now, may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit.
be with us now and forevermore. Go in peace. Amen.